points do it. bet providing the odds for Championship Sunday, the early game, 3 p.m. Eastern in Kansas City. The Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Chiefs. The Chiefs opened as six and a half point favorites. The line has since moved to seven in favor of the Chiefs with an over under of 54. Point five, Just like last week. The over-under last week actually moved from 54.5 to 54. And for a while, it looked like it was going to be under. And then all of a sudden, they score 100 points in the final five minutes of the game. 75%, no, 77%, excuse me, of the spread money is on the Chiefs. Is the Chris Sims spread money on the the Chiefs. Well, you're going to have to wait for that for a few minutes because I'm not going to give well, the answer just, to that. I know, yeah, I, I, know, know. I know. I know. I'm I know. teasing. I'm, yes. I'm slipping back into when we have to do so, 16 games mode. <laughs> we have time to talk about this. Where do one. you want to go here first? What do you think you want to do? You want to break down Bengals offense, Chiefs defense, vice versa? What's the more, more interesting one to you where you want to go? I always, I always bow to you, oh, great Florio. Let's do Bengals offense, Chiefs defense because we saw last time around a strong reluctance by the Chiefs defense to, you know, put appropriate defensive players on yeah. Jamar Chase to keep him from wrecking the game. No, right. I, listen, that, to me, that it is the key to the football game in, in a lot of ways. It, it's this matchup right here. Uh, the Chiefs, you know, watching the game back uh, uh, from week, eight, week 17, you know, watching the game last week against the Buffalo Bills, what they do. The Chiefs want to play man-to-man. That's what they like to do. And then they do some disguise stuff where so they drop into zones and do all that. But, like, when the game is on the line or it's a big play, they'd rather get their corner up in your face and go, we're going to make you earn it. You're going to have to get open, and we're going to make your quarterback have to throw the football. It's a good formula versus most of the fo- football leagues versus most of the NFL, not against this f-ing group. Are you kidding me? So they should have learned their lesson watching back that film. I mean, first off, you can't match up with all these guys across the board. You can't. You know, they're, they're, they're receiving court. It's more dangerous than the Chiefs is. It is. Higgins, Boyd, Jamar Chase. To me, when I look back at the game, that was what got the, the Chiefs in trouble. Listen, the Chiefs, you heard me say this. You know, they played, they played zone. And on two of those plays, Jamar Chase made a big touchdown play. You know, but they weren't the wrong calls. You know, one that Sorensen didn't execute the right way and didn't get to his half playing cover two, and he just let Jamar Chase run up the sideline. The other one that we've always seen where, you know, Jamar Chase catches the little out route and then stops and then runs through the defense. I mean, again, you know, great players are going to make some great plays at times. It wasn't the wrong defense. Yeah, they gave up a 10-yard completion. They had people to rally there to make the tackle, and they didn't do that. Jamar Chase is a superstar, arguably the best receiver in football. So, But my big thing is, I think from those two plays, Spagnolo got scared to play zone after that, where he was like, oh, no, they made those two big plays. Oh, I'm going to get back to make them earn it. And to me, Mike, that would be one thing I'd go, no, I wouldn't. You almost have to approach the Bengals, in my opinion, almost like teams approach the Chiefs the whole year. We're going to take the big play away. Take the big play away, and, and maybe they'll make a mistake or they won't be able to score touchdowns. So the Raiders did that to them a little bit in the wild card round, but that's what I would expect. And why would I expect that even more? Look at last week. You know, the Titans play zone defense. That made Burrow hold the ball a little bit, wait for guys to get in windows. You pat the ball, boom, he gets crushed and sacked. So that's why I would do that. That, to me, is one of the big things of the football game. You know, you play man-to-man. We saw what Jamar Chase could do in man-to-man. Third and 27 against the Bengals in Week 17. First down. You know, touchdowns down the right sideline versus man-to-man. A whole bunch of other big plays. So that's where I think the Chiefs got to be very careful about their approach. You play zone. You give your chance to your pass rush to get to the quarterback. Even last week, Titans made a dreadful error when the, the Bengals were backed up and they played man and blitz, and what'd they do? They threw the ball one yard deep to Jamar Chase. He made one guy miss, and all of a sudden he's 60 yards up the sideline. So that approach to me is one of the things to look out for, Mike. And I don't know, I ask you, do you think Spagnolo and company will back off like they normally do and take a little different approach? Or you think they're just going to go, hey, this is what got us here. This is what we do. Screw it. And we'll just we'll, we'll play them the way we want to play them. I think you have to formulate your plan to mesh with the opponent you're facing. And they've gotten the experience just a few weeks ago of what it means to face the Bengals' offense. So, yeah, I, like, like we say all the time, the team that won round one is going to be tempted to do what it did 
the last time around, and the team that lost is going to have the impetus to change. It puts more pressure on the team that won the last time around. It really is astounding. The Bengals won, and they're seven-point underdogs in the rematch. But I think it does give the Chiefs the kick in the ass, and it, I think, compels the Bengals to maybe break from what they did, be ready to do something else. And I'm looking at the the season statistics for a key player that we have not mentioned. We talked about the game earlier today for, I don't know, a solid 20 minutes on PFT Live. Joe Mixon, I think, is a guy that could be a difference maker in this game. There was a stretch middle of the season yeah, where right. the Bengals went run heavy against the Steelers and against the Raiders. 123 yards rushing on 30 carries against the Raiders in a 32-13 to win, and 165 yards rushing and 28 carries against the Steelers in a 41-10 to victory. Maybe Steve Spagnuolo and the Chiefs defense is going to be so obsessed with taking away Jamar Chase, accounting for T. Higgins so they don't get Gabriel Davis by him, dealing with Tyler Boyd, dealing with Joe Burrow. Maybe one way, and this gets back to keep Patrick Mahomes on the sidelines drinking Gatorade, Maybe Joe Mixon is a big part of this game plan. Maybe the zig when they zag this week is shorten the game, extend the drives, take full advantage of a guy who had 54 yards rushing last week, 48 yards rushing the week before. Hasn't had more than 65 yards rushing in any game since having 165 against the Steelers. What do you think of that? I, I, I mean, th- he's got to play a factor in this game. He has to. Uh, b- because of what you said, I, I think, you know, the Chiefs are going to have to formulate their, their plan a little bit about what happened first time around. So, therefore, I would expect them to play maybe some more conservative pass coverages and defenses that way, which are going to lend, like, to good looks in the run game. And when you have, as we've talked about, you know, a few times last weekend – when you know your offensive line is struggling in pass protection the way it is, the best way to slow down a good pass rush, and let's not mess up here or mess around, this Chiefs pass rush is good. You know, we, we've talked about it a lot. I mean, they got three difference makers up there, Jones and Clark and Melvin Ingram. Uh, it's, it's tough to deal with that group. I, I, they definitely have an advantage when it comes to the pass game. You worry about the run game a little, getting that going, then – that might bring the Chiefs into some of the looks that we talked about that burned them in Week 17 to where, damn, man, Joe Mixon up the middle for 8. Joe Mixon up the middle for 10. Okay, crap. You know what? we got to play man-to-man. we got to get another guy in the box. i got to be a little more aggressive here. I can't. We're, we're dying a slow death that way. I just I do question whether the Bengals can get it going. You know, we've seen, you know, here against, you know, upper echelon type defenses, playoff defenses with studs in the front seven, I don't know if the Bengals can do it. I don't. I do think you got to try and see what happens there, but I, I do question whether they'll have the ability to get Joe Mixon off and have a big day. I do. I'm not sure how that will work. Well, but if the Chiefs do skew heavily yeah. toward protecting their their, their asses corners. against right. getting burned by, yeah. and you know, then 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 the opening may be there I for know. Joe Mixon. We know, know he's got the capability to do it. I think that what happened with the Bengals, once they kind of hit stretch run playoff mode, it became get the ball, more Joe about Burrow. flexing, flexing yeah. the offensive muscle in the passing game. I agree. And, I agree. And, you know, when, when, you're, when you're mapping out the continuation of the game from January 2 and you're thinking what are the Chiefs going to do given what basically was an extended halftime, a very extended halftime after the Bengals' victory – what are the Chiefs going to do and how are we going to adjust? And what, what is going to be there for us? You know, you can, as I said this earlier today, you can take those 11 players and deploy them however you want. But there's always going to be an opening somewhere. The challenge is finding it, exploiting it, and then moving to another opening that arises when they try to account for that one. Right. That's part of the, yeah, the chess the ch- match that yeah. goes on throughout a game. But, but uh, I, I, I just think that Look, the, the the Bengals need something early to seize some momentum. It reminds me, at one level, of what happened in the wild card round. The Steelers and the Chiefs played it close. The Steelers yeah. were able to hang in there. Then they get the gift touchdown on the T.J. Watt fumble recovery and return. The problem is the Steelers didn't have the offense to continue. See, with the Chiefs, you got to catch them flat-footed like every quarter. You can't just rely on one early one because they'll recover from it. At some point, 
they're going to rattle off. They're, they're the team, the basketball team that goes on the 18 to two run. The Bengals have the offense to go toe to toe with them. They just need a, an opening, a couple of openings, but they need to get, they, they need their offense to keep going. As I say that, I'm talking myself into forget about running the ball. You got to show you can pass. You got to show that Joe Burrow is able to go toe to toe with Patrick Mahomes. I, I think they're going to err on that still, Mike. I, you know, because of what you said, what you're saying is basically when they realized they had to get in the playoffs and do all that, they wanted to put the ball in their best player's hand and they were going to go down that way. Not going, oh, we got to be balanced and run the ball with Joe Mixon and do that. I'm with you there. I mean, again, I think they'll test the waters a little early to see, like, hey, can we run the ball? Can this really be an aspect of our game today and do that and do that? But once if they get a feel like, oh, no, it doesn't look good, I think they'll go back to what you're talking about. They're just going to go, let's go, Joe Burrow, and start picking them apart. Uh, we're, we're not going to go down, you know, throwing jabs and protecting body blows and stuff. We're coming out going to the haymakers, and I expect that. And, listen, I could see – you know, I could see the Bengals being – I could see this game going so many different ways. I wouldn't be shocked to see the Chiefs jump out to a lead and the Bengals come back like happened in Week 17 or the other way around. I don't know. There's a lot of damn uh, explosive offensive players on the field in this one, which should lead to some exciting plays. Here's an important point that I just kind of thought of as we were talking it through. The Bengals have made it clear throughout most of the season – that they're here to stay. They intend to be here to stay. So, so they're, they're trying to build something that is consistent. They want to contend every year. They plan to contend every year. I think they're more likely to go down swinging. They're not going to get timid when they've gotten this far because they're going to be back here next year. And they don't want to develop this habit of when we get close to the brass ring, we're going to start looking down and get nervous. Oh, but it's a long fall off the horse. No, they're going to try to grab it. And if they fail this year, fine. But we're going to be who we are. We're not going to change who we are. Like the Chiefs aren't going to change who they are. We're not going to change who we are. And if who we are isn't good enough this year, oh, well, next year it will be. We're going to keep being who we are. So, I, you know, I, I, I think that it's important to realize this isn't the last season the Bengals are ever going to play. No, this is just they're a at start. the beginning. Yes. And now is not the time for the Bengals to go timid. Being who they are has gotten them this far. So I've talked myself out of a run-heavy approach with Joe Mixon and just let Joe Burrow come out and be the babyface killer and do what he needs to do to try to beat Patrick Mahomes. All right, Patrick Mahomes has the ball. Bengals on defense, what happens? Well, I mean, you know, there's no longer the, like, you can't say with the Kansas City Chiefs anymore, like, we're going to protect the deep part of the field and we're just going to wait and we think the Chiefs will be impatient and mess things up. You know, and they won't, they'll, they'll make a turnover or Mahomes will try to force a pass. That's over. So you better not like go into the game thinking that's going to happen. No way. I mean, look at last week. What do you think the Bills were doing the whole damn game? I mean, it was 12 play drive, 12 play drive, 13 play, 60 yard drive for, for a field goal. I mean, they, 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 that's over. Mahomes answered those questions. He's realized how he's got to play here going forward until defenses start playing different. So they're totally comfort, comfortable doing that. And the Bengals in week, in week 17, they, they took that approach because they were still a little bit like, well, you know, I don't know. We haven't seen enough games yet of the Chiefs being patient and carving people up. You know, but, but within that, early in the game, the Chiefs were patient and carved them up to a degree. You know, the, the thing that I look at that's also different, the Chiefs will have a healthy offensive line this first time, this, this time around. You know, in Week 17, they did not. They had to move some people around. They had two of their starters out. I think that affected the football game. But to me, more than anything, Mike, and I think we hit this a little on, on PFT this morning, like it, it, you got to do – some outside the box things with the with the Chiefs right now, in my opinion. You can't just think, oh, we're gonna play, you know, soft zone coverages and we'll mate for them, and make a mistake. I think we've gotten to the point now where, no, you're gonna have to roll the dice and be a little calculated and take some risks here and there. You're gonna. The Bengals got very good corners. I think there's a few times in every quarter they gotta roll the dice and go, you know what, I'm gonna bring some crazy little blitz and you know maybe drop a guy over here. And 
uh, hope that, you know, it just fosters Mahomes or he doesn't see things the right way or they don't pick up the blitz the right way and we get home and hit him as he's throwing the ball. Something of that nature. But to sit there and think you're going to play this like, oh, Ben, don't break and they'll actually break, that is done. That is done. And that's the one thing, Mike, I know I told you today too. Just the Bengals, one of my critiques of them during the season was – you know, if they want to make a run in the playoffs or get to the Super Bowl, they got to be a little more versatile and tricky on defense. And they've done that the first two weeks of the playoffs. And we'll see. I think they're going to have to do some of that again here in this one if they want to win it because just playing soft zone coverage, stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Mahomes is going to cover – he's going to carve you up. And, and th- this reminds me of what former Vikings coach Mike Zimmer had to say after the Vikings were stomped by the Eagles 38-7 to four years ago in the conference championship round. He said, and I'm paraphrasing, next time we get back here, maybe we need to spend a little more time looking at our tendencies. You got 19 games of film. 19. What have you shown? How can you counter that? Self-scout thyself scout the other team that's where the next level attention to detail sleep in the office shower every other day right that that, that's where it really reaches a crescendo what have you kept in your bag of tricks and what are you able to detect in the trail of breadcrumbs that covers 20 weeks that's out there what can you find you know i i think of the the scene from The Hangover when Zach Galifianakis' character is counting cards and they're doing the, 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 the riff on A Beautiful Mind and everything. That, this is it. It's all out there. What can you do this week to find that thing that's going to give you the edge? Or are you going to keep doing what you've done all along defensively? And, and you've seen signs of the Bengals doing things differently. That's going to be the challenge. I and think from so. the Chiefs standpoint, Chiefs standpoint, shit, just keep doing what you do. Yeah. Why stop? They're in right. a groove. They're in a zone. They're Michael Jordan in the shrug game. And, it, you know, why, why stop? Just shrug. Just keep going. I, I ag- agreed. I mean, the Chiefs got it going on, on the offensive side of the ball. That's for sure. They kind of recaptured their mojo there in December and January and I think really have played their best football the last two weeks as far as just total, complete game plan and, and how to play that the right way. Uh, they're one of the best pass-protecting offensive lines in football. That's why I look at it and two go, Bengals, you can't just play soft zone coverages and think your front four is going to get it done. I don't think so, not against this group. i got a lot of respect for that Bengals D-line, but it's not great enough to where I think it's going to overpower this Chiefs offensive line and passing the game. And to your point, too, with the Chiefs rolling and doing what you do, you know, there was a point late in the year, December, November, where I was going, the Chiefs got to run the ball a little bit more because Mahomes hasn't shown the ability totally to be patient yet. So I was going, well, if they're going to play these soft zones, then you got to take advantage of this big overpowering offensive line and run the ball a little bit. Well, you know, Mahomes did mature and figured it out. And within that a little bit, the Chiefs have just the right mix of running the football. Just the right mix. You know, even last week, it doesn't have to be earth-shattering. It doesn't have to be anything like that. But you know, they ran it well enough to where the Bills had to worry about it. And, and not only worry about it, but, you know, what it does, again, like we always talk about, it slows a pass rush down. Yeah, you, get, you let your offensive line, you know, fire off the ball and, and, and impose their physicality as well. But to me, it does more for the Chiefs in the fact that it opens up another avenue of their playbook. You know, when they run the ball just a little, then the McCole Hardman and Tyree Kill reverses and sweeps. They, they carry more water. They're more dangerous. And then all of a sudden, the play-action pass becomes a real thing. And it doesn't have to be Mahomes in the shotgun and that's where they become a really really dangerous offense and that's where you know I I do look at the Bengals defense DJ Reader Hendrickson they're gonna have to play their best game of the year for them to win this football game there is somebody on that defense is gonna have to make some things happen that are outside the norm uh for 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 them to you know get an extra position for Joe possession for Joe Burrow or pull off the upset All right, so now it's time to make the picks. And what we've done this week, because I wanted to protect myself against any temptation, I have a two-game lead against the spread versus Chris. There's only three games left to pick. I could just, and this is where the temptation came into play, I could just hear what Chris says and take the same pick against the spread and, uh, you know, kind of coast into the winner's circle. I don't want that temptation. I trust that I would do the right thing. 
I don't want the devil on my left shoulder telling me, just wait, just wait, change your pick, change your pick. So before we started, I texted my scores and winners to Pete. He can and and for the right amount of money, he will agree that the scores I tell you <laughs> yeah. are the actual scores right. I told him. He gets the temptation. <laughs> he, He's hey, tw- hey Chris, uh, wait, wait, but let me tell Pete. Go ahead and, and send me a tweet with your bank deposit I was, information. I was like thinking Antonio the same Brown thing. Did. Yeah, right. I was thinking <laughs> the same damn thing. My mind went there right, right away. I send him your bank account information over social media. We'll get it there for All sure. Right. Go ahead, give us the winner and All the right. score. Listen, I think this is going to be a great game. I do. I, I mean, they're just the quarterbacks are so good. The offenses are so good. The players on the offense are so good. I don't expect a blowout. I don't. I mean, again, I wouldn't be shocked if the Bengals win this game, but I'm not going to pick them to win the game. I'm not. Not on the road, not in their first championship game experience against the Chiefs who have been there, done that. You know, they're at home. You know, I do think crowd advantage helps them here in this one a little bit because of the protection issues we've talked about with the Bengals. Now that pass rush gets off the ball a little earlier. So I'm going to go Kansas City 34-30. Exciting game, but I do think that the Bengals will stay within the range of the spread and cover the spread. So you are taking the Bengals to cover the spread. That's all I care about. You got no chance in hell to come back and beat me against the spread. I've lapped you there, but the spread, you have an opening, and the opening is there because here's what I believe is going to happen. And this is not an anti-Bengals pick. This is one of those hedges for me because all due respect to the Chiefs, I'd like to see the Bengals win. I'd like to see Bengals 49ers in the Super Bowl. If I had to choose my two Super Bowl participants, I'd, and then there's some nostalgia there. It goes back to Super Bowl 16, Super Bowl 23. Yeah. I'd like to see Bengals 49ers one more time all these years later. But I feel like whoever it is, I said this earlier, you drop them into Arrowhead on Sunday, Chiefs are going to beat them. You could reconstitute the 72 Dolphins in their prime, Chiefs are going to beat them. 85 Bears. Chiefs are going to beat them. Any of the great 49ers teams, Chiefs are going to beat them. There's just something right now about the Chiefs. They started slow. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Well, now they're sprinting. They're in their kick, and it's something to behold. Chiefs 41, Bengals 24. I think they're going to overpower the Bengals. It's just not going to be their day. They're not going to be deterred. They're not going to be discouraged. They're going to come back next year and maybe host the AFC Championship. But for now, this is it for the Chiefs. They get back to the Super Bowl for the third straight year with a rousing victory. I hope it's not 41-24. I hope it's closer. I hope you're right. I hope you get one more closer to I me. Hope too. That's fine. That's fine. I don't mind. But I think I think it's going to be one of those. And it just feels like we're set up for that after last week. And it feels like we're set up for a correction, for an adjustment. And I think the correction is the Chiefs just dropped the pedal to the metal. And the Bengals learn what they're going to need to have to do yeah. if they want to be the Chiefs moving forward. That's right. I, you know, again, that's it's 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 a big part of the reason why I can't pick them. I agree with a lot of what you said there. And, and the Bengals, again, I still think are on the high a little bit of like, hey, this is great. Look at us. We're winning playoff games. We're so happy to be here. And the Chiefs were like, no, no, we expect to be here and we expect to win. And we actually expect to go to the next game and win too and be the champions. That's what we've expected all along. And I think there is something to that. So uh, it'd be interesting. And I could see the game going your way. I mean, come on, it's the Chiefs. You know, you, 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 of course, the game could be 27-24 with five minutes left in the game. And you go, this is a great game. And all of a sudden, bing, bong, boom. And you go, holy crap, holy shit. They blew them out. How the hell did they just do that that quick? You never know. So uh, I, I can't wait. And that's what's going to be fun about this game because of all the playmakers. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.